Atom Eve is one of the female heroes from the Invincible universe, and she is debatably the most powerful person in that universe. But I'll get to that in a bit because it does require a bit of explanation. Now Eve has the power to rearrange atoms at will, meaning she can turn anything into anything else. She can turn a wall into a door, harden the air to make a force field, heat up water so it boils, or turn leaves into a nice cup of coffee. She can quite literally do anything, because the whole world is made of atoms, and different elements are just atoms in a different order. So if you can rearrange those atoms, you can make anything. But if you're unfamiliar with the character, just think of her as a female firestorm. She can control atoms like him, and instead of fire, she has pink energy that she blasts enemies with and uses for flight. Although I should say that it's not actually energy, but hardened air. Eve hardens the air to create force fields and so that she can fly. Now, Atom Eve's origin actually starts before she is even born. Her mother was a homeless woman who was taken in by the government and paid to be experimented on. Or rather, I should say, they experimented on her children to give them superpowers. And she gave birth to several children, but all of them either died before they were born or were genetic monstrosities that couldn't live for more than a few hours outside of a laboratory pod. But Adam Eve, on the other hand, was the diamond in the rough. And just as her mother was giving birth to her, her doctor arranged for her to go to a public hospital, as they were not close enough to a military hospital base when she went into labour. But unfortunately, Eve was stillborn and born dead. Or at least, that's what the doctor told the government. In truth, he had arranged for them to go to a public hospital so that he could switch Eve's body with a different dead baby, in order to give her a shot at a normal life. Now, how exactly he managed to fool all of the hospital staff and switch these babies in the first place, not to mention later on fooling the military doctor who would, of course, dissected Eve's corpse, well, none of that's actually explained. So, just go with it. So, Eve grew up in an average American household with a father and a mother who were also kind of average. Eve, on the other hand, was a genius, at least in regards to science. She knew everything about atoms and physics instinctively, it was all part of her powers. She was such a prodigy that she got accepted to a private school who even offered to lower their tuition rates to let her in. That's how high her test scores were. But unfortunately, it didn't work out because the only thing Eve excelled at was science. In all other subjects, her grades weren't necessarily bad, but they were really only average, whereas they had expected her to excel in all areas over time. So they kicked her out of the school, much to the annoyance of her parents. Eve also started to discover that when she was extremely emotional, she could transform things into other things, such as tacky Christmas clothes into nice clothes, or a baseball bat into a football ball. And over time, she practiced with these powers and learned how to control them. And she even became a hero before she'd hit puberty, rescuing a bunch of animals from being experimented on. But the scientist who had made her and saved her had been keeping tabs on her, or rather he'd been stalking her for her entire life. Although, to be fair, he is her father. I mean, it's not actually stated for sure that he is, but clearly he is. He was in love with the mother, and they would need a sperm donor. And this doctor's name, incidentally, is Dr. Arias Brandyworth, just so you know. And Eve asks who he is, and why he has been following her for her entire life, because she's always seen him lurking in the shadows. And so he explains her origins, though he leaves out that her mother was homeless to spare Eve's feelings. The Doctor also explains what her powers are and why she can't control living flesh. You see, the scientists who'd made her had installed a mental block on her when she was still in the womb. They did it to limit her abilities, otherwise she'd just be all-powerful, and the government wanted a weapon they could control. And make no mistake, they were making Eve so she could be a weapon. So the Doctor warns her that people will be watching, and if they work out who she is, she'll be in trouble, so she needs to hide her powers. Now, Eve did listen to him, but sadly, her version of listening was to keep being a hero and just wear a mask. So eventually, the government agency who had given her her powers noticed she existed, and they wanted their weapon back. They even sent her siblings, the failed experiments, to try and capture her. And Eve was pretty much able to beat them all, but unfortunately, they all died, because, as I said, they couldn't survive outside of a laboratory pod. And so the government is able to take her back to their lab, and they show her that her mother isn't actually dead like Eve and her scientist father had thought. But now that they had Eve, they don't need the mother anymore. So they kill the mother right in front of her, and they kill the traitor scientist. Effectively, Eve watched both her mother and her father die right in front of her. Needless to say, this was rather distressing, 
In fact, this is the most grief-stricken that Eve had ever been. So much so that she was able to overcome the mental block that stops her from controlling living flesh. And she became all-powerful. And so she uses this power to erase her existence from the government operatives' minds, forever freeing herself from them. But it's only after she has done this and returned to normal that she realizes she could have used her powers to resurrect her dead parents. But since the moment has passed, they're now dead forever. It's a pretty bittersweet ending to the story. Yes, she has escaped and got a freedom, but her parents are dead. Though Eve does go on to be one of the greatest heroes of all time. And she also lives for all time. She is functionally immortal. Yes, she can still die of a mortal injury, and she does still age like a normal human being does and dies of old age. But when she's just about to die, her body fights to survive. And that means that she can overcome her mental block and tap into her full, unlimited powers. Meaning, every time she's about to die, she can just bring herself back to life. And when she's about to die of old age, she can just make herself young again. Like I said, she's functionally immortal. Although when you think about it, whenever Adam Eve's in a tough spot, when someone she loves is going to die or the bad guy is about to win the day, she could actually just kill herself and then she'd be able to tap into her full powers, heal her own body, resurrect anyone who's fallen and defeat the bad guy as needed. Seriously, Atom Eve is as close to a god as anyone gets in the Invincible Universe. She's pretty much all powerful. Yes, she can't create a planet or a new species, but being able to resurrect the dead and control anyone's mind and body well, what is that if not a god? And that is Atom Eve's origin. Now, it does have to be said that experimenting on the homeless and on children isn't exactly something new. I mean, we've seen that a lot in other stories. But I would say that they have made this cliche their own, and they've actually made quite an interesting character. Atom Eve's actually one of my favourite characters in the Invincible Universe. But what do you think of Atom Eve's origin? And do you agree that she is the strongest person in the Invincible Universe? True, she has to die in order to tap into her full potential, but since she can resurrect herself right after, that's not really that big a deal. But be sure to let us know what you think in the comments, and I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.